first, the current state of the economy. Um, you know, people are very scared right now. Inflation is high. Um, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty and that, that spills over to the stock market. So what are your thoughts on the current state of the economy? I was hoping you were going to ask me to explain why the Giants are three and one or if Aaron is <laughs> 52. We'll get there. Rather than the, the, soon. the economy. Um, I think the economy uh, is is absolutely historic right now. And there's a lot of stuff going on. And we we keep wanting to kind of shove the present into molds of histories of the past. But nothing really quite fits. Um, uh, right now, we're, we're recovering from a pandemic. And that process is still going on, not just the one in America, but globally. Um, and you shoved a lot of money in people's pockets, and they still seem to have some money to spend. And so you have this uh, inflation problem, which is not quite as bad as we had 40 years ago in the 1980s. But you do have the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, trying to slow the economy. Everything would be easy to understand as a terrible, terrible economy if we weren't you know, doing like hundreds of thousands of new jobs every month. And that kind of gets to my other side of the story. We keep telling this one side of the story, oh, there's inflation, there must be a recession. But we, we can't be having a recession when we're doing three or 400,000 new jobs every month. And well, why is that? It's because the economy is still coming back from the pandemic. There, we, we just, oh, about two months ago, reached the level of jobs that we'd lost in the pandemic and we went above it. But there's still some industries like leisure and hospitality, state and local government workers, teachers in this country, nursing, um, that are well below where they are. And it's still a very, very good job market. Um, so what's happening right now is there's a lot of inflation. Some of that inflation is related to all the money that was pumped into the system from the Federal Reserve being too easy. But a lot of it was related to supply problems that were linked to the pandemic. China was still locked down or almost is still locked down right now. Yeah. What's China? China is the factory of the world. It's the factory of the United States. So to the extent that they're locked down, we're not getting all the goods that, that people need. Yeah, it, the economy's softening, but how much it softens? I'm, I'm a little bit, like I said, I'd rather discuss why the New York Giants are three and one <laughs> than figure out if this economy is headed to a recession because I'm kind of perplexed about both of them kind of equally. I can't I, I can't really figure out this Daniel Jones thing myself, but um, <laughs> <laughs> let, let's talk about the outlook for inflation. A lot of economists um, are, are seeing it going down to 6.8 percent by the end of this year. Yeah. Some projections have it at 3.6 percent by the end of December of 23. Sure. Obviously, the, the feds are, are raising, um, you know, basis points. So how do we get the, how do we even get to 6.8? Because every time we look, it's like, all right, we're still in the eights. We're still in the eights. What's the outlook for it for the rest of this year? How are we going to get to 6.8? Well, let me make sure everybody understands what we're talking about when we talk about inflation. Inflation is the growth of prices. It's not necessarily so that when you go up month to month or, or year to year, you got to go up by 8% every year. If it doesn't go up anymore, that's a zero. And what we're trying to do is get to two. So we've had these big increases in prices. How do we get there? Well, we start producing more cars, put those cars on the lot. We slow down the housing market. We slow down consumer spending. Um, and we're going to have to have probably some uh, unemployment. We get the supply chains back working. And then we can get back to a more normal inflation level. And, of course, the Federal Reserve has to get interest rates up to help to, to, to try to slow the economy. Um, I'm not cheerleading any of this stuff, but it's the stuff that the economists say has to have, have, have to happen in order to uh, bring inflation down. Um, I remember in 2019 when a Deutsche Bank report came out uh, and you were on air with Joss and you predicted that a global recession was going to happen um, because I think trade tensions, Brexit and global growth slowdown. So if we do hit recession next year, what do you believe will be like the two or three catalysts that will lead us out of it safely? Um, so I think at that point, the Federal Reserve will um, will reverse course. So that'll help a lot. Uh, um, the question becomes, how much is the Federal Reserve willing to tolerate in terms of declines in growth before it reverses course? Um, mm. So 
it may be, and, and I actually have been asking this question of Fed officials for several months. And uh, just last Thursday in Cleveland, I got this answer from the Cleveland Fed president, Loretta Masters. She said, if we hit recession, we're probably going to keep hiking. Because right now at the Federal Reserve, reducing or getting inflation back down to its target level of 2% is job number one. And they're willing to tolerate a certain level of unemployment increase in order to make that happen. Right now, their forecasts are for kind of a modest increase in unemployment, but a lot of folks don't really believe that. A lot of folks think unemployment may go up quite a bit more in order to create the slack in the job market that's needed to bring down inflation. Um, I have my doubts about that. I think it's still possible to, to get away with this thing with a mild downturn and a mild increase in, in, in unemployment. And that's because I still believe in some momentum to this economy that has to do with a continued reopening. I, I don't know. I'd ask you guys, is everything back to normal the way it was before the pandemic? And, and I, my own experience is no. There's still yeah. restaurants that are closed. There's still things that are tough to get. Um, I remember when you'd go to a car lot and you'd, you'd, you'd get a dealer who cared if you walked out. And they don't care anymore if you walk out because there's not as many cars on the lots. Yeah. Um, and, and you guys may know this or not. I don't know. But when you go into a car dealer, you're not buying the car in front of you. You're buying a car that's the dealer's going to replace it with. Right. Mm -hmm. So so if there's no car in the in, in the lot to replace the one you're taking, you're you have no bargaining power. But when there's a car in the lot, a car on the train on the way to the lot, a car in the factory being made that's going to get on the train to get to the lot, that's when you have the kind of bargaining power that we used to have. I went in there one time and the guy's like, I don't know if I really want to give you the time of day because I don't know. I was, I was like, OK, I'm going to hang out and not buy a car right now because I'm going to wait till things chill out a little bit. And we did get a little bit of good news in some of the auto reports that they're kind of clearing the... um. Uh, some some of the uh, uh, or the lack of inventory, they're increasing inventories down the road. So so that that could get better. And that'll bring down inflation. You remember one of the big uh, uh, impulses to inflation we had was used cars. Um, yeah. I went to go give my car back on lease and it was like worth fifteen thousand dollars more than I paid for it mm -hmm. um, than, than the lease was. So I actually bought the car off a of lease and I told the guy I'm not going to buy a car now. So. And I got to figure out whether I to get new tires on my car, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the Fed uh, has continuously raised interest rates this year. Yeah. Um, do you think that it can go much higher than it is? And do you think that they're doing a responsible job with this interest rate hikes every couple of months so far? Well, I, I sure wish they'd listen to what I would and many others were saying, which was that they'd had gotten off of the easy monetary policy sooner than they did. Um, it, it's kind of inexplicable. They went and they were pumping $120 billion a month into the economy by buying bonds. They were still at zero, even when they saw that this inflation was not what they call transitory. That is, it wasn't going away real fast. And yeah. they really kept uh, uh, their foot on the, on the accelerator of the economy too long. I think given that, and the reason why I say that is because I think at this point, it is responsible for them to keep raising rates um, because they're behind the curve on this. They have to get rates up to a more normal or actually restrictive level in order to break the economy uh, and break. I mean, B-R-A-K-E. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's kind of like this funny debate we have, like, is the Fed going to break B-R-E-A-K, the economy, or B-R-A-K-E? That's really one of the big debates that's out there. And, and they may not stop until they break it, as in, you know, a bone or something like that. But they do have to put the brakes on the economy right now to try to bring inflation. And the reason is that, you know, the, the thinking is that you can't really do business when inflation is 8, 10, 12 percent a month, that you can't plan, um, you can't, you can't uh, uh, really run the economy, and that ultimately, if you run inflation too hot, you guys were talking about Turkey before. Yeah. Um, Turkey is one of my favorite places because there is no better example of terrible central banking than Turkey. You guys know what happened in Turkey, right? Um, which is that the, the central bank has been you, you gave the number before. Was it 83 yeah, percent month over month inflation? Yeah, that's insane. So imagine imagine 
I mean, what are we talking about here? If something cost a buck and then it cost a buck 80 the next month. I mean, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, uh, uh, and, and they kept, uh, in reducing interest rates while they had higher inflation. And, and let's go back even more recently to what happened in, in England. Have you guys had a chance to talk about that on your show? Yeah, we actually no, covered, no. It, covered it last week. Let's talk about it. Let's yeah. talk about it. Well, well I'll, give you, I'll give you the two cents since you went over it. But if you didn't tune in last week, what happened is um, the British government came forward and said it's going to boost deficit spending. It's going to cut tax rates. And and the the, the pound... The, the 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 British pound the sterling freaked out. It low it, it it fell to almost parity. That is one to one with the dollar. It's usually yeah. like uh, uh, a a do- a pound buys a a dollar fifty went down to a pound buying just a dollar. Uh, it's now up again. I'll explain that in just a second. But um, you know, uh, and and then British interest rates um they surged on on the news that there was going to be deficit spending. So um. You're, I'm answering the question whether or not I think what the Fed is doing responsible. And I think the reaction of markets to responsible central banking is positive uh, to the extent that if the Fed said, we're going to let inflation go, I think the market would be a lot worse than it is right now. The market's coming to terms with a very different and new reality. And that reality is interest rates for the Fed funds rate that may go up as high as four and a half or five percent. It was zero in March yeah. of 2020. Yeah. Uh, two. So what we're living through right now is an historic moment of unprecedentedly aggressive central bank interest rate policy. Um, some people say it's irresponsible. I'll give you the other side of that story. They say the Fed is being too aggressive. The other side of that story is that the Fed is behind the curve, and the most important thing for the welfare of the most people in this country is to bring inflation under control. Because if you're working a job and let's say you get a 5% raise, but inflation is 8%, well, you went backwards by 3% in your standard of living. My graduates from my school being Forbes, bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs> a mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs>